All right, hi everyone, thank you for coming. So I've been here in the Bay Area for about three and a half years, um, originally from the East Coast. And when I first moved here, I took a quick weekend trip back to DC to see some of my friends. And I was on my way to the airport for my flight back here to San Francisco. And my Uber driver and I started randomly talking about pool. He was talking about how much he likes to play pool and how often he plays it in the DC area. And I started telling him about how I played a lot of pool in college because we had a pool table in my dorm freshman and sophomore year, and I didn't get much work done, <laughs> to say the least. So we continued talking about it a bit, and he eventually told me about the APA, which is the American Pool Players Association. And the APA is a national league here uh, in the United States. And it has different leagues and divisions throughout the US and different cities, and San Francisco happens to have one. And teams will play out of different bars and various pool halls in the cities that they're hosted in. He also told me that teams were always looking for new members, and every team had members of different skill levels. The league also has a handicap system set up, so it's less intimidating for lower skill level players to go up against higher skill level players. Basically, the league is set up to make it really easy for new members to join, no matter what level of experience they have playing pool. And since I was new to San Francisco, this was really appealing to me. I didn't know the city all that well, I didn't know that many people outside of tech, and I was just getting to know the Bay Area. So it occurred to me that when I landed in San Francisco, I should immediately pull my phone out, look this up, and sign up. I thought it would be a great way to meet people, to see different parts of the city, and also meet lots of people who weren't all in tech. So here we are, three and a half years later, after that fateful Uber ride. I'm on two teams here in the city. I've learned a ton about pool. If you talk to any of my friends or coworkers, they'll tell you obsessed. If you look closely at my boots tonight, there's tons of chalk on them from last night. And I even met one of my best friends here in the city through the league. About a year and a half ago, my Thursday night team and I won a trip to Hawaii for a tournament. And this past weekend, I qualified for, um, with my doubles partner for my first national tournament in Vegas in April. So, really excited. <laughs> Don't be fooled, though. There's a skill level system for a reason. <laughs> so hi, I'm Mars. I don't play pool all the time, and I'm certainly not a professional. I'm definitely an amateur. So by day, I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix, and I've been there for almost two years now. I work on our acquisition UI team, which is a team that focuses specifically on our sign-up funnel across different platforms. So for the past eight or nine months of 2017, I've spent my time re-architecting our sign-up flow on our website. So today I want to talk to you about what I learned from that experience, because re-architecting code is hard. It's hard to know where to start. It can be overwhelming. There's lots of work to be done. You have to rewrite or rethink the way a whole code base works, a code base that a lot of people have put time and resources and energy into. And it's also hard because you need to figure out how to improve the code base's current problems while maintaining the current feature set, but also think about how the new architecture is going to set you up well for future feature development. So software re-architecture involves a careful blend of strategy and execution. And I haven't come across a good mental framework for providing guidance on how to approach blending these two things until now. And this is where pool comes in for me. Because we can learn from it. We can borrow some of the tactics that go into playing a game of pool to figure out how to blend strategy and execution masterfully when it comes to software engineering. So today we're going to talk about what I learned from re-architecting our sign-up flow last year. I'm going to start with some of the context behind why we decided to go ahead and rewrite it. And then we're going to go through the steps of playing a game of pool and how that applies to re-architecting code. And then we're going to conclude. So as many of you probably already know, we do a lot of A-B testing on our UIs at Netflix. When we A-B test something in Netflix, we generally have an idea of something we think that will be an improvement to the experience. We also have a hypothesis as to why we think it's going to be an improvement. And for each idea, there might be several designs that will express that idea in the UI. And while we hope that we could just pick the best one, because as designers and engineers, we're flawless, right? But we prefer data. So we A-B test all of these improvements. 
Now, A-B testing is kind of misleading in this, in this situation because at Netflix, we often run tests with more than two variants. So really think of it as A, B, C, D, E testing, and so on. So as engineers, we'll take the designs that we've gotten from our, um, our, par our partners, we'll implement them, and we'll start running our code in production. And once we have enough users in production who are seeing each experience to make the data significant, we'll analyze our results. So a lot of times when you see articles about Netflix A-B tests, they're about the member experience. But in sign up, when we A-B test something, our goals are slightly different than improving member retention. We try to accomplish two things. One, we want to improve the rate at which people are signing up. And two, we want to find more qualified members. We want to make sure that the people who sign up are more qualified in the long run so they'll have their subscriptions for longer. So for the past two or three years, we've been rigorously testing our sign-up flow. And this is what the old sign-up flow used to look like. It was a series of steps with page reloads in between them. And this is our new sign-up flow. Compared to our old one, the obvious differences are that it looks different. It's Netflix, Netflix branded, it has our new fonts, it has the logo and the colors, and it's more in line visually with the, with the member experience. But more importantly, actually, it's a single page application. Quick, back and forth. <laughs> You're welcome. So the A-B test that we ran um, for the sign-up flow had many variants, and as you can imagine, since I'm talking to you here today, this new design was very successful, and it outperformed our old, our old design. And so we decided to go through a step at Netflix that we call productization, which is a step that we take with the code that we tested with, and we make sure that it's production ready. And we make sure to clean up all of the code related to any of the variants that didn't outperform the old design. The level of effort involved in productizing something is really different depending on the UI area that you're working in or the scale of the test. In this particular case, when we decided to productize, we actually decided to completely rewrite the test code. And you're probably wondering, why are we rewriting something that we just rewrote? Well, there's a couple reasons. When we A-B test things, we don't often know how they're going to perform against our existing UI, so we often make compromises in the code quality and scalability of the implementation. We do this so that we can quickly get an idea of how our new test is performing before we invest lots of resources and time into perfecting the code. Here, specifically, this manifested in the way that we were dealing with our state on the client side in a single page application. Our UI components were written in React, but for the test, we had implemented a homegrown data management solution for our single page application, which ended up meaning that we had state at the top level of the application. It was also sprinkled throughout our component tree. And over time, this became really hard to maintain. And the client side logic was hard to follow. It was also really bug prone. Because as we were updating, we were adding new features for the test, or we were fixing other bugs, the state would become even more scattered than before. So these reasons all led us to take the winning variant of our test, and when we productize it, completely rewrite it. Especially since we already had A-B tests in mind to run in the future, and we wanted to make sure that the code base was not only maintainable in the long run, but also that it's extensible enough to experiment on top of later. So this is where I came in. I was tasked to re-architect our sign flow. And because we knew that we had problem with state management, the entire goal was to take our UI components and make them presentational only, and consolidate the state management in one place in our single page application. So re-architecting things in, is hard, and this is generally how I feel about working on them. <laughs> I love this GIF. This went into the pull request for one of my, <laughs> one of my tasks. Um, anyways. So not only is it a lot of work to do in rewriting an entire code base, but also as developers, you probably know that we don't document things really well, especially when we're in a hurry. So when you're in the middle of testing an entirely new UI, you're trying to make sure that it's performing well and that you can get a read on how it performs against your old one, there's not much time for writing things down. So how do you navigate a code base and try to figure out what the actual features that are relevant are? And to make things even more complicated, not only do we need to make sure that we move the current feature set over, 
But in order to set ourselves up at Netflix for success in the future, we need to rewrite it in a way that makes it easy for people to add new features to and also experiment on top of. This is difficult when you have no idea what those A-B tests are going to look like or what those features are going to be. So how do we think about re-architecting code? So that you make your code bases maintainable and stable and forward-thinking enough that they can be extensible. And here's where I want to bring Pool in and introduce this wonderful sport to all of you. In my time coding and playing Pool, I've realized that software engineering and billiards aren't all that different. They involve similar types of problem solving, in that there's a clear end goal, and in each step along the way, you need to be able to deal with the immediate problems on hand, and you need to strategize about the next step. But you also need to be able to execute your current step so that you're well set up enough for the next one. Playing pool well can be summarized as masterfully combining strategy and execution. And I want to show you how this applies to re-architecting code as well. So let's talk about the steps involved in playing a game. So it can be broken down into five steps, or, well, really four, if you read the last one. The first is to choose your lineup. You want to walk around the table, find your way out, take your shot, and repeat. And I'm going to go through each step one at a time. And I'm going to go through each step and what it means in the context of playing pool. And then I'm going to follow that up quickly with how it can be applied to software engineering and specifically the task of rewriting code. So like I mentioned, I'm in a league here in the city. The league is made up of different teams. On a given league night, five members of one team are going to go up against five members of another team in individual matchups. Everyone in the league has a different skill level on a scale of two to seven. And this is meant to be an indicator of how good they are relative to other people in the league. So on a typical league night, the first thing that we do as a team is we choose our lineup. We try to match up our players against players of the other team based on our strengths and weaknesses and their strengths and weaknesses. So you can imagine that from one night to another, this lineup is going to change. In software engineering, we also need to be thoughtful about picking our lineup correctly. So here, picking the right lineup means picking the people and resources to work on a rewrite that makes sense in relationship to the specific task at hand. Our opponent here is not another team. It's the code base that we're working on. And you need to pick your resources intelligently so that you can take advantage of the different types and levels of experience of mem members of your team and your coworkers to address the specific issues that you're looking to fix in your code base. So here you can imagine that from one project to another, team members that work on the specific project are going to change. In our case, for sign up, our UI components were written in React. We had our states sprinkled throughout the component tree. And because this is our sign-up flow, we do a lot of A-B testing. We knew that the code base had to be flexible and reusable and extensible and all of those words that I've already mentioned. And this meant pulling the state out of the component tree, as well as rewriting our, component tree, our specific UI components to be more reusable between use cases. And here's where I specifically came in. I love reusable UI components. I've actually given a talk on it three or four times now. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but... Um, so I was chosen as part of the lineup to work on this project to help and use some of my previous experience writing reusable UI components and what I learned from that experience about being thoughtful about where state is stored. OK, so after we choose our lineup, we can play our game. So I typically play eight ball in the league, and I don't want to, to go into too much details about the rules of the game, but just a quick overview of what's important. In a game of eight ball, I'll be playing against an opponent. And the goal of the game is to get the eight ball in at the end after getting all of my balls in so they'll be either stripes or solids. And generally, my opponent and I will take turns at the table. After someone misses or fouls, the table will turn over to the other player. When it's my turn, the first thing that I'm going to do is physically walk around the table. And I do this for two reasons. One is that I want to get a sense of all of the possible shots that I can take given the state of the table. And it's important to walk around to get an idea of what the table looks like from new angles. If I walk around, maybe I can see balls that I didn't think I could hit before. Maybe I can see pockets that a certain ball could go in that I wasn't able to see before. Either way, by walking around the table, I get a different perspective than the spot that I was originally standing in. 
And the second reason I do this is to get an idea of where all my balls are in relationship to each other. In the context of software engineering, the idea of walking around the table is to get an idea of the code base before diving into a rewrite. You need to figure out the project dependencies, figure out what feature set you need to maintain, how is the code structured, what's the context behind that implementation, and basically, what are the problems in the code base? How can you fix a code base without knowing what you need to fix? So when working on sign-up, the code base was primarily test code. And because the test spec over three years, you can imagine, was dynamic, it kept changing, there wasn't a lot of time to document things. In order to get a good idea of the feature set that we had to rewrite, it involved a lot of going back into our files, coming back out, making graphs, and figuring out what those features are that we needed to support and move over into the new code base. So by doing this, we not only figured out the feature set that we needed to maintain, but also what the problems were in the implementation of those features, which, like I mentioned before, was state being scattered all over our component tree. In software engineering, walking around the table also means getting a lay of the land of the developer community, as well as your own code base. Are there tools out there that can solve your problem? And if so, which one's going to be the best one for the job? Knowing your code base intimately after having already walked around, walked around the table or walked through it will help you to answer this question really easily. And so for sign up, we knew we had to fix the way we managed our state, and so we kind of had an idea that we needed to use some sort of flux framework. So we went out there, we took a look at the different implementations, you know, created some pros and cons, um, and we chose one, which is something that I'll go into a little bit later. So after I've walked around the table and I've seen all of the possible shots that I can take and where all the balls are in relationship to each other, the next thing that I need to do is actually to choose the shot that I'm gonna take. This isn't as straightforward as it sounds, this is actually a really strategic step. I know which balls I can hit now, but I need to pick the one that I think I have a good chance of making, as well as be somewhat forward thinking about which ones I might want to hit later. I'm trying to see my way to the end of the game, basically, where hopefully I'm the one who ends up pocketing the eight ball and winning. And this always has to do with the state of the table and will change throughout the game. Ideally, every time I go up to shoot, the last ball I hit is the eight. So normally, when I look at the table, the way I work my way backwards is from that ball. So I want to come up in my mind with a series of balls that sets me up with the long-term goal of winning the game. So I need to figure out which shots are going to set me up well to complete an entire run. It's important to note that actually the first ball here you should take, or any shot, sometimes isn't the easiest ball on the table to actually get into a pocket. Sometimes you need to go for a shot that's going to set you up well for the next ball, even though it might be more difficult. So, when we're rewriting code, we need to do the same thing. We have an overall idea of where we want to end up, which is what the code base is going to look like after we've done our previous step of walking around the table. We need to deal with the immediate problems at hand and also think about our code base and set it up well for the future. So, like in pool, it's best to work backwards. Best to figure out the ideal state of your new code base and work backwards from there. So knowing for sign up that we needed more centralized state, we work our way backwards from there and we decided to introduce a Flux framework. Having walked around the table of the developer community, we decided that that framework was going to be Redux. And we chose this particular implementation for a few reasons. One of them is that it has a relatively small file size and we try to focus on performance. And the other is that it's really extensible. You can write custom Redux middleware for your application. And this really appealed to us because we wanted our new code base to be flexible. Flexible enough for new features and also for A-B tests that might not fit well into the existing architecture while they're being tested out. So now that we've walked around the table, we've found our way out, we've come up with our strategy, it's time to execute and take our shot. So in pool, I have a run on the table in my mind. I need to take into account the short term, and the long-term goals, and I need to figure out what's actually doable for me. Maybe I can execute the run that I have in my mind fully, and I can win the game. But sometimes there isn't just a good series of balls to hit in a given term to win. And I'll break the table down into a series of smaller runs, and then maybe I'll play a defense that could leave my opponent in a bad position, which hopefully will guarantee me another turn at the table. 
And while a defense isn't good in the short-term goal of getting balls in, it hopefully will get me closer to the longer-term goal of winning the game. Either way, it's time to hit something. In software engineering, we also have our strategy. And like in a game of pool, I wonder, can I win from here? Can the refactor be done in one fell swoop? Or do we need to break the table up into a series of runs and break our work up into smaller, more digestible steps? <coughs> so it's time to code, which is the equivalent of taking our shot. When rewriting the code base, for sign up at least, we wanted to figure out if we should do the state refactor in one fell swoop or break it up into smaller efforts. And as you can imagine, we decided to break it up into smaller efforts. And so we decided to rewrite the sign-up flow one page at a time. We did this for a couple reasons. First, it makes it easier for other developers to reason about the rewrite that we're working on and to actually review the new code. And secondly, it made it easier for our QA engineers to validate the sign-up flow as we went. So for every page that we rewrote, our QA engineers could focus on just that one page and make sure that we didn't have any regressions for the multitude of user states that could hit that page. And in both of these cases, by breaking it up into smaller steps, we were able to get technical as well as functional feedback on our implementation quickly. So in pool, I've taken my shot. And more often than not, I end up missing. And when I say missing here, I don't just mean that a ball didn't go in, but I also mean that my strategy didn't go to plan. And in pool, there can be multiple factors as to why this happens. Different bars will have different constraints, so the walls might be really close to the table. The table could be a little bit faster than you're used to. You're used to. The cue ball that you're using could be heavier, which means it will behave differently. Either way, no matter what the reason was, it's important here to analyze why you missed, because it can inform how you find your way out or you execute when you next get up to the table. So you have to adjust mentally. And hopefully, I get another turn, and it's going to be time to go through all the steps again. It's important to go through all the steps every time because the state of the table will most likely have changed, not only because of what my opponent has been doing, but also because of what I have been doing and how I've been affecting the balls as I've been going along. And like in pool, we have to adjust when we miss in software engineering as well. What does it mean in software engineering to miss when you're doing a rewrite, though? More often than not, it's bugs, which can not only mean that something needs to be fixed quickly, but also can expose more fundamental problems with the new architecture. And we have to learn from these mistakes and iterate. So when we rewrote the sign-up flow, when we broke it into smaller steps, it allowed us to figure out and if and how we missed early on in the project as we went along. And so we could quickly learn from our mistakes, we could adjust and repeat. So we worked incrementally to allow for faster and more productive iteration, and the early feedback was invaluable in order to make sure that we didn't spend too much time and effort going down the wrong path. And while it may have taken a little longer, it was important to get the new code base right, because that's kind of the whole point behind the re-architecture. And so that was worth the time investment. So, Software re-architectures are still pretty hard. It's hard to know where to start, and there's a lot of work to do, and we need to balance fixing the current problems with future work. But re-architecting code is a lot like playing pool, or at least that's the way I see it, and I hope you see that now too. We need to find a way to be successful in the short term as well as set ourselves up for the long-term success. We need to be able to address the problems that are in front of us now but also be able to address them in a way that anticipates the work we're going to need to do in the future. We need to find the right blend of strategy and execution for software re-architecture projects. And we need to do that using Pool. Or, well, we'd like to. Pool provides a good mental framework for how to blend strategy and execution, as well as concrete tactics as to how to get through a project of this nature. So for software engineering and code rewrites, like in Pool, we need to choose our lineup, walk around the table, find our way out, take our shot, and repeat. And up next, we have Tony talking about how we re-architected our non-member homepage to be more performant. Thank you.